This week's video has a unique backstory. A friend of mine actually found this table sitting by the trash bin behind his business. The back brace had come detached and the top was no longer connected to the body of the table. It was covered with lots of dirt, paint, and some unknown gunk that looked like melted ice cream. I had my fingers crossed that the white stuff was paint and not bird poop. When he gave it to me, he said he was challenging me to bring it back to life. In fact, he said he'd donate $100 to a charity of my choice if I could. So with that challenge before me, I was determined to make it look spectacular. I have something unique in store for this sad little table. Stay tuned to see the transformation. Of course, the first step was to remove the layers of sand and dirt covering the table. I used crud cutter and gave it a thorough scrubbing. I think I ended up going over it three or four times to finally get it clean. I then rinsed it with water to remove all the crud cutter. I let the table sit overnight to dry completely. The top veneer was separating in about a six inch strip. I used Weld Bond multi-purpose adhesive glue to fill the void. I found it easiest to insert the glue in the void using a syringe. A putty knife was also used to allow space for me to insert the syringe. The excess glue was carefully wiped off with a damp paper towel because I plan to stain the top and stain doesn't adhere to wood that has glue on it. The edge was then clamped overnight. To get the best adhesion from wood glue, you should always clamp it. Another section of wood veneer was glued in the same manner. Quick strip was applied with a chip brush one section at a time and left on for about 15 minutes. You can tell when it's ready to be removed by rubbing the chip brush on the area. If it's ready, you'll see that the finish has liquefied. I found that a small brush worked well to help remove the finish on the fluted areas of the legs. I used a coarse steel wool pad to further loosen the finish. Occasionally, I added an additional stripper to assist further with loosening the finish. I then wiped off the quick strip with paper towels. I went over the recently stripped area with a coarse steel wool pad soaked in mineral spirits to remove as much of the remaining stripper and finish as possible. The last step was to go over the entire area with paper towels to remove the mineral spirits and softened finish. I repeated this entire process again, so I stripped the entire base twice. This is what the leg looked like after the first application of the stripper. And this is what it looked like after the second. Look at that rich, deep color of the mahogany. It's so beautiful. I think you'll agree that the leg stripped twice turned out great. I knew that once it had dried, I would have very little touch-up sanding to do. Quick strip really did a good job. The top was more difficult to strip because it had paint, finish, and some unknown substance on it. I used basically the same process, but I think I ended up stripping it three times to finally get down to the raw wood. I was pleased with how the quick strip removed the finish.
people say we won't last, but I will be alright as long as I'm the one with you. Oh, forever, summer high. I know that we'll be fine. Letting go and go free for a living on top of the world. Blue skies and nights, winds never keeping track of time. Sun is skin driving. I was pleased with how the quick strip removed the finish. It's very important that you use this product in a well ventilated area and wear a respirator, eye protection, and nitrile gloves. A dust mask is not sufficient. Even if you're outside, if you can smell it, you should wear a respirator. I wore nitrile gloves and even then my gloves wore through twice in the fingertips so I began to double glove to prevent from getting any of the stripper on my hands. I recently produced a video comparing Quick Strip with two other brands. That link will be at the end of this video. I also have the safety data sheet posted on my website if you want additional information about safety precautions that should be taken when using this product. I allowed the base and top to dry overnight. This is what it looked like the next day. I only had to very lightly sand a few areas that felt a little rough using 220 grit sandpaper. A segment of car washing sponge was used to apply Verithane gel stain in the color mahogany. The color was deep and rich. The gel stain was really easy to apply and I got immediate even coverage. I think I'm in love with gel stain. I wiped off the stain within a few minutes using paper towels. Only one coat was needed to provide a beautiful even color to the top and the base. Please give this video a thumbs up if you're finding it enjoyable or informative. That helps my fledgling little channel a lot, so I would certainly appreciate it. While the table was drying, I used a Dremel to cut the one quarter inch wood dowels so they were a little bigger than the width of the curved piece under the tabletop. I sanded the exposed end of the dowel and then glued them to the curved piece with weld bond adhesive. Care was taken to ensure the exposed edge was perfectly straight. Clamps were used to ensure a tight bond of the glue to the wood dowels. These clamps were left on overnight. The next day I removed the clamps and then used the Dremel to cut off any dowels extending over the upper edge of the curved piece. Since some of them were still a little too long, I then used a sander to sand them all smooth and even. I haven't used lacquer in several years, but I decided to use it on this table because it dries really fast and it provides a nice traditional finish. I sprayed a total of three coats on the base and the new fluted edge as recommended by Minwax allowing each coat to dry thoroughly before applying the next. I got the entire table base finished in less than 90 minutes. The top was also sprayed with lacquer. Between coats I used a crumbled up brown paper bag to sand the top to get rid of any raised areas from dust etc. However, out of habit, I dusted in between the second and third coats with a damp cloth to remove any dust. This is something I do repeatedly anytime I finish furniture. Of course, you can also use a tack cloth, but I never have one available when I need it, so it's usually just a cloth that I lightly mist with water. Within five minutes after I did this, on the top, I sprayed on the last coat of lacquer. Almost immediately, I began to see a white, foggy haze on the surface of the table. This is called bloom or blush, and it's caused by moisture being trapped under the lacquer. I felt so stupid because I know that lacquer must be applied to dried furniture or bloom can occur. 
In fact, that's why I used the gel stain. It was not water-based. So I got out my hair dryer and I tried to evaporate the water with the heat from the hair dryer. That did not work. Instead, it caused tiny little bubbles to form in the area where the bloom had been. Look at the huge white area of bloom on the edge. I decided to just let it sit overnight and allow it to dry thoroughly, which is what I should have done in the first place when I saw the bloom. The next afternoon, I sanded the bubbled area flat with 3000 grit sandpaper and dusted it with a dry cloth since I still didn't know where my tack cloth was. Then I sprayed this product called Blush Retarder made by Mohawk over the top. You may have seen my video where I used it to get rid of bloom caused by heat on a dining room table. I ended up selling that dining room set for over $2,000 because I was able to get rid of the bloom on the top. The link to that video will be at the end of this video. To use the blush retarder, you simply spray a light mist over the top. The blush retarder got rid of the bloom within 10 minutes. It literally goes away in front of your eyes. Even the white bloom area on the edge was gone. However, it did leave a glossy shine on the top. So I waited about 30 minutes until it was completely dry and then I resprayed it with the Minwax lacquer that had a satin finish and the top was bloom free with a beautiful lacquer finish. All I had left to do was to screw the top back on to the base and take my after photos. As we look at the before and after photos, I'll remind you of the poor condition of this table when I started. Now this little occasional table looks spectacular, and I'm proud of the work that I did to restore it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel a lot because it tells YouTube that this video is of value and others would benefit too. If you become a subscriber and click the notification bell, you'll be notified when I post my weekly videos. I always respond to comments, so if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I'm grateful to all the viewers for your support and encouragement shown through their comments, likes, and subscriptions. Thank you. On the right, you'll see several videos that provide additional information about how to refinish, restore, and restyle furniture so you can flip it for a profit or refinish it for your personal use. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.